What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Yesterday, I released a video going through that second question, and I had a ton of comments about Part E and how I said that you know the length of the graph and the chime change, and I said that the amplitude would be smaller. Ton of questions, guys. I just want to go through a deeper dive of just Part E and why the amplitude is going to be smaller and also the period is going to be greater. I also made a claim that at the lowest position, that the F nets for both cases were going to be equal. And I said that I would derive that for you. So I'm going to do that as well. First, I'm going to take a second. I'm just going to draw what we were looking at. Okay. And they call this point right here L1. This point here, the equilibrium position, L2. And this point here, L3. Now, in the second case, when I added this mass right away here, I said that the F net here and the F net here we're going to be identical. And I'm gonna derive that and show you that first. If you don't need that derivation, you could skip ahead to the deep dive into why the amplitude was less. In the first case, we know that at this position, F net is gonna be equal to zero Newtons. This is where the object is in equilibrium, right? I let it go and it was just hanging here before I pulled it down further. So if we look at the two forces, there's this force of the restoring force of the spring and there's also Mg. Now these are gonna be equal and opposite. So if I said the F net was equal to minus Fs Mg, we can now say that Fs is going to be equal to Mg. So if I call this first initial drop K naught, right? That's how much it dropped when the mass was added. I can now make an expression that says K X naught equals Mg. This is at L2. But now at L3, when I'm way down here, I have Fg and I have the restoring force. And let's say I pull this down an equal distance of x. But now if net is not equal to zero, right? Because it's going to accelerate out of this point. So I would say that the F net at L3 is going to be equal to Fs minus Mg. And I made this minus because they're opposite. So I can now solve again for Fs and say that Fs is gonna be equal to K, but now it's stretched a new length of X naught plus X minus Mg. I could factor this back in, say Kx naught plus Kx minus Mg. But we see we have an expression for Kx naught. I could call that Mg. So now I could substitute this in right here and say that mg plus kx minus mg. So we see that the real f net at, at position three is just kx. And the reason in the second case it's exactly the same is because I can keep this exact same logic. The new L2 is now just gonna be the same where f net is equal to zero newtons and fs is equal to mg. The k will remain the same and I'll have an x naught still that will be equal to m plus little m g. And then if I come back up here, I'm going to see that at k, x naught plus x minus m little m g. I can now substitute, and I see this new equation right here. Here's that x naught equation, which is just going to be this. So then I have m plus m g plus kx minus m plus m g. These will go away. And once again, I'm left with the exact same kx. This is a pretty good thing to understand that at the bottom of a vertical spring, the net force acting on the spring is always going to be kx. Now let's talk about why the amplitude is actually less. To do so, I'm actually gonna use numbers because I know how much you guys love numbers. I wish you'd get away from it a little bit more, but you don't, that's okay. This was the initial L1. Here's L2 and here's L3. First, let's prove this range of oscillation using energy. We can't use dynamics because A is going to vary. So I'd have to find the acceleration at every point, but I can always use energy. First, let's find out what this X naught is gonna be when I add this mass to it. Let's say the mass is equal to two kilograms we'll say that the spring constant is equal to 20 newtons per meter. Now this would be something that I'd have to give you, 
But I want to show you, like, you can prove using math, but you guys need to be able to do this without math. So at L2, we just saw that Fs equals Mg. So Kx0 equals Mg. 20 newtons per meter times X0 equals 2 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. So X0 is equal to 1 meter. Now I pull it down another one meter, and at this lowest point, I can solve for how high the block is gonna go. Now in this problem, we saw that's gonna go back to L1, so the total range of oscillation should be two meters, or delta Y should be two meters. We know that when this block is stopped, the instant I let go of it, what it has, it is some energy. It has some spring potential energy that is gonna be converted into gravitational potential energy. And initially, I'm gonna say this has zero gravitational potential energy because I'm gonna call this position zero. So the potential energy of a spring is gonna be equal to one half kx squared. And this is gonna be equal to, at the top, mg delta h, or delta y in this case. How high is it gonna go? And this is because energy is gonna be conserved. So if I substitute what I know, one half k, K is 20 newtons per meter. X is 2 meters squared, because, right, total from its equilibrium point, that's what X equals. It's been stretched 1 meter and 2 meters. That is going to be equal to the mass, 2 kilograms, times G, 10 meters per second squared, delta H. So we have 40 equals 20 H. H equals 2 meters which is what we hypothesize should be the case. It should go up one meter to the equilibrium point and then up another one meter to L1. So this works out and it follows what the problem is telling us. But the next thing the problem told us now is when it got to the lowest point, I added M less than big M. So now we'll say that we added a mass of one kilogram at the bottom, and now we want to see what happens to this H when I do so. And a lot of the things in this relationship are going to remain constant. The only thing that's going to change is the M. We still have a half. The K constant does not change when I add mass, so that's going to be 20 newtons per meter. It's still at that lowest point, so this is still 2 meters squared. Right? There was a lot of kids that were worried about like this stretching further because of the mass being added. It tells us specifically, at L3, I added a mass on without pulling it down, without adding any energy to the system. So at this point now that we're identifying, X is still 2 meters squared. That is going to be equal to the new mass. So it's our original mass here plus this little mass. So that's going to be 3 kilograms. Gravity is still the same. So now what happens to delta H? Well, now I have 40 equals 30 H. H is going to be equal to 1.33 meters. So as we see, it is not going to travel all the way up to 2 meters. It's going to now travel up to its new L2. Call this like L2 prime which is going to be 0.66 meters. And then it's going to travel up to a new height up here, L1. Now, this is L1 prime because it's still going to be a little lower. There's going to be a difference here, right? There's going to be a little gap. It's not going to go way back up here. It's only going to go up to here. So it goes up here. It goes to its new equilibrium point of 0.66. So that's this distance. And then it goes another 0.66 meters to satisfy this change of oscillation of 1.33 meters, where the range of oscillation here is 2 meters. So for condition A, the first condition, the A was equal to 1 meter, and the range of oscillation was equal to 2 meters. But now here... The amplitude is equal to 0.66 meters, and the range of oscillation is equal to 1.33 meters. So this is how we use energy to prove that. And guys, if you did this problem in reverse and you started here, 
it would still come back down 1.33. It would not change that. And then just to recap, guys, the period increases because the period of a spring is equal to 2 pi m over k. So t squared equals 4 pi squared m, everything over k. As m goes up, period goes up. I hope that helped, guys. I hope the numbers cleared up. But remember, look at how long it took me to do this with numbers. You need to understand and be able to see these numbers and relationships in your head and understand that if I add mass to the system, if the initial potential energy is going to remain the same, right? The initial potential energy in both cases was 40. So you need to understand that if the initial potential energies of the spring remain the same, and I add mass to the system, the height is going to decrease. If this deep dive gave you some extra help, guys, please, I beg you, give the video a thumbs up. It's the best thank you you can give me. I'm going to take the rest of the weekend off, enjoy it with friends and family, more review videos back on Monday. And also, to I wanted to reference, somebody left me an awesome comment thanking me for getting back to you guys and your questions. Remember, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm a teacher. I am here to help you, and I will help you before the exam, up until the day of the exam, and after the exam as well. I hope you'll stick with me. Have a good day, guys.